Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Canadian Retro. I've got a pretty big pickups video for you here. Uh, this is stuff that I've sort of accumulated over a while, and I just haven't really got around to making a video for this stuff, so I decided to put it all together here and show you what I got this time around. Uh, some pretty amazing stuff in here, uh, considering what it's like out there these days. So, thought I'd get into this uh, right now. Um, first thing I want to show you though is probably the most important thing that I got uh, this time around and that is I received something from um, Extra Life here for doing the 25 hour challenge and if you haven't checked out that video uh, where I sort of did like a little bit of a recap there you probably should it was for an amazing cause and I was so happy to participate this year so uh, probably didn't, don't really need to say much more about that because I'm pretty sure if you follow my channel you're pretty much aware of that but uh, this is something that uh, was sent and I just got it in the mail today uh, from them so I'll rip this all open here and the funny part is actually on the front of it uh, it says to retro Canadian so it's pretty hilarious but what it is here is a t-shirt uh, that they send out to participants that reach certain goals and I can't remember what the exact number of the goal was for this I think it might have been like 500 bucks or something maybe it was 100 bucks I can't remember but uh, it's the extra life uh, shirt here so you can see it says like extralife.org uh, play games and heal kids and then it's got like the date that was on it and like their logo and the Chir children's miracle network on there so pretty cool so uh, for the rest of this video I'll be uh, changing into something a little more appropriate I think to the cause here so here we go so I think that's a better look for me right there let's continue on with this uh, pickup video so pretty happy about that though uh, that was the first thing Another thing I wanted to show you here, kind of interesting, this is why I picked up, normally I wouldn't pick up uh, original Xbox systems, but this one had a pretty good price tag on, it was only 10 bucks. The um, thing with this one though is, it looks to me like it has like an executor type chip or whatever they call it in there. I tried to fire it up, it didn't seem to want to load into it, it just gave me like a blank screen when I did that, although when the chip was set to off, it loaded into... Um, what it looked like it was supposed to, the original dashboard. So kind of weird, um, not totally certain about it. It might have something to do with the settings. So if you're an expert on these chips that are on there, uh, I know this one's been modified. It probably, in all likelihood of it's using one of those chips, probably has a larger hard drive into it and, and everything like that. So um, pretty cool in the last for 10 bucks. I gotta see if I can get this sucker going though. That's to the deal with that. Normally I wouldn't pick one of those up, but you can see the reason why I would pick that one up for sure. I'm uh, moving on. I got a couple of different controllers here. I'm pretty stoked about. Uh, first one here is one that's for the PS3. Uh, it's kind of cool. I'm not really sure everything about this one, but it is a Namco gun. I'm pretty sure. Of it. Yeah, it's a Namco gun. Uh, it says NC109 on it. So I don't know. It looks pretty cool for what it is, and I guess it must work with like the PlayStation Eye or something like that. So there's like a analog stick over on this side, and there's also one at the back here. And lots of buttons all over the place on this one so that was pretty cool it's just a USB kind of port on the end of it plugs right into your system I'm not totally certain how all of this one here works I'll have to look up probably some reviews on this and just see what it's all about but um, you know if it uh, works with some pretty cool games I'm pretty excited about that so I'll have to check that one out for sure and then uh, another controller which I normally wouldn't pick up like third-party aftermarket kind of controllers just not really my shtick for the most part when I see them I usually leave them behind but this one was way too cool it's a Mad Cats controller for PS1 and PS2 uh, it's like a little tinier kind of controller but you got like all your buttons there like there's the shoulder buttons are on the top here kind of thing now they're more like uh, Super Nintendo style I guess really you can tell they're sort of going with like a Nintendo-y kind of look but you got your two like analogs right here your, your um, button layouts here and then you got like your d-pad here and to me it feels like pretty solid like it has quite a bit of heft to it so I thought it was pretty decently um, constructed considering the fact that it is like a, a Mad Cats controller it's called a Mad Cats Retrocon uh, for that one there it was only five bucks though and I thought that was pretty killer steal for um, this kind of a very unique layout kind of controller so I picked that one up I thought it was pretty cool uh, next thing I'll get into here are uh, a few different like uh, strat guides kind of thing. Uh, first one is Final Fantasy X2. Uh, this is a limited edition strategy guide. So it's pretty cool. It comes in this like weird kind of casing though. Uh, so it has um, this one book in here. 
it's not in the world's perfect shape because there's something really weird that the previous owner had done to this. They took the art book and kind of jammed it into the sleeve here. So it's like, I don't know, it won't come out like the actual book. I don't know what or how they managed to do that, but I really don't want to go ripping at it either to tear it apart. And there is like a map or something in it, but it has like a little chunk out of it. But, um, you know, I think it was a pretty decent price. They wanted $5 for it. So I thought it was pretty neat uh, considering what it was and how beautiful the artwork and stuff like that is in this one. So pretty pumped on that. Uh, the other day I picked these two up at the same time. Uh, one of them is the Halo 4 Essential Visual Guide. So it's pretty neat and uh, again, it's like, you know, like full color kind of thing. Very beautiful looking book if you ask me. Uh, I don't know if I'll necessarily hold on to that, but I'm going to give it a flip through for sure and then uh, might end up flipping it later on, but still cool nonetheless. And I think that one was not even $5. I think it was like $3 or something like that. Uh, same thing with this one. It's a Tekken 6 art, art book. So again, you know, that's going to be like full on color kind of thing going on there. Really neat. Um, I'm not going to flip through the whole thing, but... Uh, pretty hype I think and pretty cheap to pick that one up so kind of nice uh, next thing I'll move on to here are some games that I picked up so let's go into some disc based stuff here I think that's all the major disc based things that I got uh, something that I've always wanted for my collection and really wanted to check out is GoldenEye 007 on the Wii so pick that one up and uh, pretty surprisingly at a value village these days i uh, to be able to pick it up for three bucks so Pretty killer deal right there. Uh, this one here I kind of went on a whim. I don't know if it was a wise decision, but it is a exclusive to the 360 according to what's on the cover here, and it's Import Tuner Challenge. Uh, that one there I think was seven bucks. I'm trying to remember if I got a discount on that one. I probably didn't because I'm pretty sure when I picked this up I just picked it up on its own. Um, I think it goes for a little bit more than what I what I paid for it, so I don't really know a whole ton about that one though. Another one I'm not sure if I'm going to hold on to it, but again, it's an exclusive as well, is uh, Naruto, sorry, Naruto, uh, The Broken Bond. And I've never really been much into Naruto stuff, so I don't really know a whole lot about this, but um, if you guys know anything about this or if it's worthy of something I should check out or hold on to, let me know, because uh, that one there, but uh, that one there was five bucks, so pretty good deal. And then one that I picked up today was Final Fantasy XI. Uh, but this one's online only, so I'm probably going to end up flipping this one. I don't really know necessarily uh, about this one. It's really kind of weird. I'm not a huge fan of the artwork on the front of it. I think it's like pretty bland, but uh, that's probably beside the point. It looks like a beautiful game, but again, it's online only, and you got to pay for additional like online things, so I, I just couldn't be bothered, I think, with that. That's not really my style, so... I'll probably end up flipping that, but that one is uh, factory sealed minus the fact that there's a little bit of the, the uh, packaging on the bottom there that's coming off. But uh, those are sort of like the main disc based, like newer generation, not the newest, but newer generation kind of stuff. And then I also picked up a couple of PS1 games, and I can't even remember the last time I found PS1 games out in the wild. Uh, it was a bit of a disappointment in there when I went in to the Value Village on these ones. Um, there was a bunch of games sitting there that were PS1 and when you opened up their cases all they were were uh, like the demo discs and stuff like that so there was a couple that I was willing to pick up but I couldn't uh, one of those was uh, uh, Grandia which I would have loved uh, to get a copy of Grandia for sure I opened up the case and it was like a bunch of scratched up demo discs and stuff like that it just turned out that it was only like the front panel artwork on it so it really wasn't worth picking up especially what they were asking for it but these two were definitely worth it, and that's uh, Contra The Legacy War. And for that one there, they wanted $5, so um, I picked that up. I was checking this out. Um, people kind of have a negative opinion about this Contra game, but I actually, when I was de test demoing it, or whatever, playing it out and see if it worked, um, I was enjoying my time with it, so I don't know if it's uh, you know popular opinion or something that's keeping away from people away from it, but it's not that bad. And uh, this one here, I actually resurfaced it. It's not perfect because I don't go like too crazy when I'm resurfacing because I don't want to go like right deep on it or anything. It's just, it was pretty scuffed up when I got it. So I figured it probably wouldn't play with the condition that it was in. And then I also picked up, and this is uh, one that I've always, I have in my collection already, but I kind of 
Um, every time I see it, really reminds me of back in the day because I remember seeing this at a buddy's place, and that's like to see a Kane Soul Reaver. So that one there, they only wanted three dollars for. I don't know why there was such a very price range on the games or anything, but this one here was scratched, so like no end to. So I resurfaced that. You can see it does a pretty decent job. It's still a little swirly or whatever, but plays perfectly fine. So um, I was pretty happy to be able to find a couple of really decent PS1 games out in the wild these days because I seem to be finding more. Uh, I've actually been finding more cartridge stuff, I think, than than PS1 era stuff, and PS1's sort of a spot where my heart's pretty much at, so kind of nice there. Uh, but to get into the cartridge stuff, I'll sort of so, show this part of it first. I just picked up a copy of Tetris. It was $5. thought, why not? It's actually a, uh, I think, Canadian variant, because you can see there's like this red label part on the top. I think that was Canada only. There's sort of a copy of... Mario 3 that has that on it. So I figured I'd pick that up and send it to one of my American friends at some point here, just because I figure um, they probably don't have that variant down there. And if they're variant collectors, they might want that. So I figured I'd pick that up for $5. It isn't much valued much more than that. And then uh, I also picked up, and this was from a person locally um, that, you know, he found this game in the wild and he said I, I could have it for 10 bucks. So I figured I'd get it. And I remember this game. Uh, from my Commodore 64 days, this is one of the games that I played on the Commodore 64, so I figured I'd pick it up on the NES, and that's Joust. So I didn't have this in my collection already, so I figured for $10, I couldn't get it off of eBay and get it shipped to my house any cheaper, and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't find it um, at the, one of the swaps any cheaper. And that's made by um, uh, HAL, HAL Laboratories, or whatever, HAL America, which, uh, you know, makes like the Kirby game, so pretty pumped with uh, that right there. And then... Also walked in one day and Talese had a copy of Hogan's Alley on the NES in the box, but uh, this box is probably not worth its um, packaging kind of thing. It's really in pretty rough shape, probably looks better on camera than it does in person, that's for sure. But it did have, there's a dust sleeve in there and the cartridge, although albeit there's a little bit of a mess on the label, but uh, otherwise it's pretty decent. Um, so, you know, I can glue that back down and fix it up basically. Uh, I think I already have this one in my collection, but I didn't have the box for it, so why not? Um, and yeah, like I said, the unfortunately, the box is in pretty ratty shape. Um, also picked up a copy of Renegade. That was also $5. This was on a different day, but it looks like it came from the same person because uh, same kind of tape sort of like holding together the bottom, so it looks like they've taped them back together. And again, no manual, but uh, the game's in there, and I'm trying to see, yeah, the dust leaves in there as well, so... Uh, the game's like super, super clean, so it probably is going to replace my copy of it. I don't know if I'm going to hold on to the box just because it's like so ratty, though I might just, uh, you know, get get that away uh, cheaply to someone who's looking for any condition kind of box they can get their hands on. But uh, those are pretty cool for five bucks each. And then uh, this came along. This actually came with that copy of Tetris. I forgot to mention it while I was showing that. It was the same day. And that's a copy of Pokemon Red, which is, uh, if you've been checking out my first play, something I've been playing lately. So, five bucks for a Pokemon game, that's no problem at all. And then, I think this is the last thing I need to really show you here today. And that's a uh, Game Boy uh, SP, or Game Boy Advance SP. And it's uh, totally functioning, everything like that. It's really cool because I've picked up a charger for one of these lately. I'll probably end up flipping this. This is just a uh, AGS-001 model, so... Um, you know, it doesn't have like the fancy backlit screen, but still uh, pretty decent right there. And in there, not that it's anything special, is a copy of Dog's Fashion. That's what it came with. So I don't even know what I'll do with that. that that's probably like a donor card to somebody. Um, nothing really super special and nothing I'm going to hold on to. But uh, those two together were 10 bucks. Can't remember if I used a percentage off card on those. But uh, this was pretty special. This was in the bin, the only really uh, game that day, anything worthy of me picking up. That's a copy of Pokemon Ruby, which I did not have in my collection, so that's really cool. And since uh, I'm on the Cartridge Club uh, Game of the Month here, uh, I might venture out a little further into the Pokemon land, uh, into some of these. So I do. I think this is one of the ones that I... Well, I know I didn't have it, so one of the ones that I needed for my collection so really sweet right there I know the battery in this one's toast though so I'll have to um, replace the battery in it but I did pick up some replacement batteries as well so that's just for like the timed events or whatever the game seems still on there and it still works it's just the timing events 
uh, that are built for that game won't function with a battery change so I'm gonna be doing that as well um, but yeah that's everything I got this time around pretty decent haul I think lots of little cartridge goodies there and some PS1 things that definitely after I'm pretty pumped about the uh, the strategy guys they look really beautiful I think I'm gonna definitely take a look through them I don't know if I'll absolutely use them but like the art book and all that I'm gonna take a you know closer look at those and probably uh, flip them or transfer them on to somebody who collects those kind of things but that's everything I got this time around for you guys thanks again for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please do feel free to thumbs up this video comment down below and I will see you all later